Imagine growing your own delicious tangy tomatillos right in your backyard, perfect for making your own salsa verde. In this video, we'll explore the entire process from seed to salsa, and you'll see just how easy and rewarding it can be. Hey, Snowy. <laughs> but first, what are these bizarre looking fruits? Well, you'll notice that tomatillos are quite ornamental plants, dripping with fruits encased in a unique husk. And while they belong to the nightshade family, which includes tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants, tomatillos are actually more closely related to Cape gooseberries and ground cherries, as they share the same genus. And you can easily see the resemblance between these plants. Tomateros are native to Mexico and Central America, where they've been a crucial part in the diet and cuisine of ancient cultures who began cultivating them several thousand years ago. And as for the fruits, they're green and tangy when mature, and it's often said that there's no substitute for tomateros when it comes to making green sauce or salsa verde. So I'm really excited for that. Just before we dive in, I wanted to mention that I've teamed up with my friends over at Planet Wild. They're doing awesome stuff to protect and restore our planet's biodiversity. So stay tuned, because later on I want to share a bit more about what they do, as well as something about me that you guys probably don't know about. These here are the small little seeds, and the variety that I'm growing is called Tomateo Grande Verde, which is an early maturing variety with good sized fruits. There are quite a few varieties though, including a purple coloured one, which I reckon would be fun to grow sometime too. So in the seed raising mix, I'm planting several seeds in each pot, just in case some don't germinate, and if I need to, I can always thin them out later on. I'll keep these evenly moist, and since it's mid-spring and still a little cold outside, for now I'm going to keep these by a sunny windowsill inside my house. So, it looks like we've had pretty good germination overall, and they're doing well. Maybe they're a little bit leggy from limited light, so the stems are stretching out a little bit, but not too bad really, so let's see how they progress. Alright, these are going really well, and over the past few weeks I have been bringing them outside and gradually increasing their exposure to the sun and the elements, and they're definitely ready to plant out now, right in time for the start of summer. I didn't end up thinning out any of the seedlings, but now they're doing really well, so I'm just going to carefully separate these and just have more plants. It is going to disturb them a little bit, but I think they'll be fine. So I've added a fresh compost layer to this garden, and I'm adding a bit of pea straw as well as a nice mulch to hold in the moisture over the summer. And I've got to just hose it down too, so the wind doesn't blow it all away. Let's carefully separate these seedlings, and although they are a bit long and leggy, you can actually bury some of the stems, because they have the ability to grow roots along their stems when planted deeply, a bit like tomatoes. This is called adventitious rooting, and it can result in stronger, more stable plants with increased root surface area, which can potentially enhance their ability to absorb nutrients too. And you can space these about two to three feet apart to give them enough room to grow. Also, tomatillo plants are self-incompatible, meaning they cannot pollinate themselves. So it is important to grow at least two tomatillo plants near each other to ensure cross-pollination and successful fruit set. This is where some people can go wrong if they put just one plant in without knowing this, and then they have issues later on with getting them to produce fruit. So do remember that tip, grow at least two plants. Last thing to set these up for success is I'm giving them a bit of liquid seaweed fertilizer, which should help them with any transplant shock, especially since I did have to separate all the plants out. And now we wait. All right guys, so these have really taken off and time has been flying lately and I didn't get a chance to stake these plants like I originally planned. I'm actually happy enough just to leave them to keep growing like this though. They are doing pretty well regardless. And I also have the pea straw mulch down as well, which should help to protect any fruits that are touching the ground. And there's even some pea plants that have grown from some of the seeds that were in that straw. But anyway, tomatillos are a plant that do well with being staked up. They do grow quite bushy, so something like a tomato cage would work pretty well. And that would help with saving garden space too, since they would grow more upright and taller. And it can also increase air circulation around the plants, reduce pest pressure, and it can also make harvesting a bit easier too. But you know, sometimes it's hard to keep up with doing everything in the garden, so if you do it without staking them, it can still totally work. And I mean, look how lush they are. There's lots of these beautiful yellow star-shaped flowers, which are quite attractive for insects, especially bees, which will transfer pollen between the plants, resulting in pollination. 
And if you have space in your garden, I'd recommend growing a variety of flowering plants that support a diverse range of insects and provide them with a steady food source. This will help to ensure pollinators are present, plus the more diversity we have, the more resilient our garden ecosystems become. If you have a look, you'll notice these vibrant green sepals at the base of the tomatillo flower. And once the flower gets pollinated, these sepals start to swell and they actually gradually enclose the developing fruit. This process forms the unique papery husk, which we call the calyx. And this calyx not only provides structural support and protection for the fruit, but it also acts as a barrier against animals and insects, shielding the growing tomatillo and allowing it to mature undisturbed. And as you can see, many of these are now developing. The calyx does grow quite large, even before the fruit is very big inside. So they're not ready to pick just yet, but we're well on our way to getting some tasty tomatillos. All right, guys, we are definitely due to do a tomatillo harvest. The plants are sprawling everywhere and it will make it a little harder to harvest them compared to if they were staked up but I'm super happy with the results of these plants considering the fairly minimal effort put into caring for them. I've just been watering them every three or four days or just as needed, and we've got a lot of fruit here to pick. So you can tell when these are ripe, when the fruit have grown to fill the calyx, and in many cases they'll even split that husk and push out of it too. These fruits also turn from a darker green to this lighter green when they're ready to pick, and if you leave them on longer, they'll actually ripen further and turn yellow and they can also fall off the plants too when they're really ripe. The yellow tomatillos tend to be noticeably sweeter compared to the greener fruits, and they're softer and juicier too. And this could be good for incorporating into dishes where a slightly sweeter and less acidic fruit is needed. However, the greener tomatillos have a tangier, more tart flavor, and I would say it's much brighter and fresher, and it's perfect for that traditional salsa verde or other savory dishes that benefit from that characteristic acidity. There are so many. <laughs> so this is the stage that they're typically harvested at and used, which is what I'm doing today. You might notice that the outside of tomatillos feels very sticky as well. And this sticky layer is secreted by what's called glandular trichomes on the fruits. And basically it acts as a natural insect repellent, which is actually pretty useful. And I also read a study that found that this sticky layer contains unique sucrose esters with impressive anti-inflammatory properties similar to those of common pain relievers like aspirin and ibuprofen. But typically you would wash the fruits anyway before you use them because they can have like dust or bits of soil on that sticky layer. But either way, I thought it was interesting to talk about. Tomatillos are surprisingly versatile and can be used in a variety of dishes, from salsas and sauces, to soups, stews, and grilled dishes. Today I'll be showing you how to make salsa verde, a popular and delicious way to enjoy these awesome fruits. It really brings out their fresh, tangy flavor, and whether you're using it as a dip, a topping, or a sauce, Making salsa verde is an absolute must if you grow tomatillos. So let's get started. I'll put the quantities in the description, but we'll grab a few more things from the garden. And here are all our ingredients. Let's put some water on to boil and add our onion, chilies, and three out of the four garlic cloves. The other garlic clove can go into our mortar and pestle with a teaspoon of salt, and we'll crush that up. So the onion is almost soft now, so let's throw the tomatillos into the pot to cook. Okay, the onion is done now, so let's remove it, as well as the garlic and chili, and we'll crush that up in the mortar and pestle along with that garlic salt we made. And you could do this in a blender if you prefer. The tomatillos only take a few minutes to cook, and they're done when they go soft and they start to change color, and the skin can start to split open too. So we'll add those all to this blender, along with around a third of a cup of the water from the pot plus some fresh coriander, and the mixture from our mortar and pestle. It will seem quite runny at first, but due to the pectin that tomatillos have in them, as it cools, the salsa will thicken naturally. All right, here goes. Mm. Oh my God. 
That is so good. It's so fresh and tangy and there's a good bit of spice in there. This is just incredible and it would go so well on different Mexican dishes like tacos. Highly recommend trying this. It is so, so tasty. And when it's all from the garden, it's just that much fresher and that much more delicious. This will last for about a week in the fridge and you can also make a larger batch and then freeze it. That way you'll have a tasty homemade salsa ready whenever you're craving Mexican food. The plants kept producing many more tomatillos over the season, so as well as making more salsa verde, I also froze some just on their own that I can add to other recipes over the coming months. I find it so enjoyable growing and exploring different foods that are often not available, and there is so much diversity in the different fruits, vegetables, and edible plants that you can grow. However, it is also a reminder of the importance of biodiversity and the threat it faces. Our world is sadly in a biodiversity crisis with wild places disappearing and many species at risk. That's why I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Planet Wild. They're a nature conservation organization that are building a global community of people who care deeply about the planet. So every month they team up with a new partner organization that do things like protect endangered species, support oceans and aquatic life, or revive and rewild landscapes. Their projects are funded by people like you and me through monthly memberships, and the larger the community grows, the greater the impact they can make. They also share details of their missions in monthly YouTube videos showing what was invested, what was achieved, and the ideal long-term outcomes. Now, something you guys might not know about me is that I used to work in the field of advocating for wildlife, and I was also involved in conservation projects that improved wild habitats and reintroduced animals to the wild, like these orphaned orangutans that first needed to learn all the skills required in order to survive out in the jungle. So I found it really cool seeing that Planet Wild is supporting a similar project in Borneo, where a wildlife rescue team is raising orphaned sun bears in order to successfully release them back to the wild. So after seeing their impactful work, I knew I wanted to support them and I'd love for you guys to join me. You can contribute from home, give any amount that feels right for you, plus you can cancel any time. And to get things started, the first 200 of you that sign up will have your first month covered by me. You'll make an impact right away, you'll see the results within 30 days, plus you'll become a part of a supportive community of people who are making a difference now and not sometime in the future. To learn more about Planet Wild, you can check out their latest video over here or click the link below to sign up. Thanks so much, guys.